All right, welcome everyone to the first episode of um, our early release segment. So I listened, I heard you guys. For those on the $4 subscription who can't afford to jump to the $8 one, I totally understand. I hear you. And so I don't want to leave you guys out. And that's why we're going to be doing at least once a week early release episodes. Now, yes, this is for all of the members this is for everybody but specifically this is for those uh, on the four dollar package as promised and i apologize that it took me a couple of weeks from the day that i released the patreon uh, my patreon packages in order for me to get the early release episodes going i just kind of had to get into the rhythm of the members only stuff and and so now we're here so i really do appreciate your patience now for just for the record the way it's going to work is we're going to do early release episodes i'm either going to release them on thursdays or fridays and then they'll be available for, for the public about a week after that so you guys get really um early access i've seen some other people do patreon where they do you know early release on like a thursday or friday and then you get the the episode goes out publicly on a sunday honestly i don't think that's worth it i think i got to give you guys at least a week of having the knowledge before everybody else to make it worth it so let me know what you think now let's get right into it so Operation Extend, the geomagnetic hurricane that returns rogue agents. Now, first off, we're just going to establish what agent stands for. But I do want to say I very kindly ask you to watch this episode all the way through because we're going to be analyzing two pieces of footage that... I don't do publicly. I'm doing this just to give people who are hesitant about joining Patreon a bit of an example of what we look at and what the members see as well. So I've been hearing you guys. You guys have said, Dave, you know, is it worth it for the Patreon? Check out today's episode, the connections we make, right? And the videos we show. And then you, 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 um, you decide for yourself respectfully. So agent stands for admitted genetic experimental nascence in teleportation. Now, the reason for that is because there are certain CIA agents, just like with anything in the CIA or within the intelligence community or even the military that go rogue. Now, when you go rogue, it's very simple. You're either non-compliant, you become very self-serving to your own inner agenda and not to the agenda of the movement in which you're working towards. Whether that movement are good, is good or bad is a, a different debate entirely but the point here is that you essentially go into business for yourself it's as simple as that right now the first thing that i want to do that i want to start with is i want to just evaluate earth's uh geomagnetism or the the magnetic field and the reason why i say that is because it's very important to understand the energy that nikola tesla was discussing before we jump onto the more uh, advanced topics here so first off Earth's magnetic field, according to Wikipedia, also known as the geomagnetic field, is the magnetic field that extends from the Earth's interior out into space, where it interacts with the solar wind, a stream of charged particles emanating from the sun. The magnetic field is generated by electric currents due to the motion of convection currents of a mixture of molten iron and nickel in the Earth's outer core. These convection currents are caused by heat escaping from the core, a natural process called the geodynamo. All right, end quote. Now, here's the thing. Earth's magnetic field has yet to be understood in the sense of why there's so many anomalistic occurrences. And what I mean by that is, you know, how come when you go to certain parts of the, the south in the United States, or you go in certain parts of Mexico, or you head over to Antarctica, the North Pole, why everyone's compass starts uh, stops working suddenly, and then why all of a sudden, you know, electronics stop working, people's cars end up shutting off for zero explanation uh, whatsoever right? We're going to see that a lot of this has to do with military experimentation, right? Now, we can take a look at something like the Philadelphia experiment. And the reason why I bring that up is because the Philadelphia experiment was something that truly did harness the Earth's magnetic fields. Now, I want to make something very clear as well, too. The Russians did their own version of this. And I want to play the video for you guys right now. So we're going to take a look at that. I just uh, have to scroll down to the video here. And what we're going to see is an occurrence very similar to that of the Philadelphia experiment. I'm going to play it right now. And we're going to see here, again, I've sent this to my uh, some of my guys to be analyzed. They have found no inconsistencies. If anyone finds any consistencies uh, or any uh, flaws in the footage, please let me know. We see here a boat that essentially ended up in, in a rock, pretty much from either a failed experiment or just a random anomaly, uh, anomalistic test of harnessing the gravitational field. And you're going to see why I bring this up because it's going to come full circle. So as we can see here, just, just take a look at that, right? Now I'm, it's at 35 seconds, 30, actually I'll stop it here at 40 seconds. 
just because we've, we've probably seen enough. But if you want to watch more, I'll, I'll put the link down below. Now, the reason I bring this up is because ultimately when we see things that are called UFO spirals or spirals in the sky, which I would like to thank my friend Chris for, for bringing up to me more significantly than, than, uh, than other things. We're going to notice that it's unexplainable. And do you want to know what these spirals are? These spirals are when extraterrestrials, specifically the greys, a certain faction of them, not all of them, and the Nordics return a human from the secret space program. Not necessarily the Solar Warden space program, but from multiple, because there are many different types. There's the Dark Fleet program. There's many different programs, right, from different countries and different factions and alliances of humans and extraterrestrials. So the UFO spirals occur when there's a harnessing of the natural geomagnetic magnetosphere within the earth and on top of the earth as well because there's multiple grids encompassing the earth right and so what happens here is that these spirals occur as a form of a portal that returns these be these agents if you will that are non-compliant and why do they spiral because they spiral in a certain way that harnesses the overall aspect of allowing for a portal to be one way because if this agent were to escape within the ship as the it's going through the portal, they may find a way or an apparatus to not actually go in, in a place in which they're going to be reprimanded. Now, you might say, how and where do they get re reprimanded? They're just coming back to Earth, right? That's what you would probably ask. Well, first off, these UFO spirals create something called space hurricanes. Okay, And what's interesting here is that according to my sources, there was one agent that went rogue in July of 2014. Now, let's just take a look. This could be a coincidence, but I want to point this out. Let's just take a look at an article that was just released about a space hurricane, an unexplained one that occurred in August 2014, right? However, the other thing I do want to say too is, again, this is businessinsider.com, but you can look it up because this just came out 15 hours ago from the time I'm recording this. But why did they wait until 2021 to discuss something that occurred in 2014? I understand that, you know, maybe NASA and them thought it was extraterrestrials or something they didn't publicly want to explain right off the bat because they had to cover it up. But really? Seven years? Seriously? Six to seven years you're going to wait? But anyways, let's take a look. Scientists spotted a space hurricane swirling above the magnetic North Pole. It was raining charged solar particles. Now, first off, before I go on, Notice how it's above the North Pole. Let's just make that very clear. We've seen instances of pictures and footage that has now been classified and locked up and covered up by, you know, the NASA and Google Earth and things like this of UFOs literally leaving certain bases in Antarctica, right? And there's a reason why Antarctica has to stay filled with snow at this point, which we'll talk about in another episode, probably uh, members only. But anyways, it says here, just the main points. Scientists said in a new study that they spotted a space hurricane for the first time in August 2014. Okay, so this is a month after this agent went rogue and was returned with one of the UFO spirals that was seen. Let's take a look here. The storm swirled, interesting, swirl, right? The UFO swirl spiral and this as well. Swirled 125 miles above the magnetic North Pole. Instead of dropping water, the space hurricane rained electrons which can wreak havoc on satellites. Now, this is one of the best parts, but we're not even at the best part, but this is one of them. The reason why this agent, this rogue agent, probably created this space hurricane is because he wanted to do damage to the CIA satellites, as well as the Russian ones. Because at this point, it's not even about America, Russia, what have you. It's about humans and aliens. What his agenda was, I don't know. But notice how the space hurricane coincidentally occurred just over the North Pole, where all of the top secret satellites are, not just because, you know, there's Nephilims being hidden in Antarctica and there's access to Agartha and things like this into ancient civilizations, but also because there's so many different things that these satellites are used for, for other intelligence operations that are non-alien related. So it's kind of like hitting two birds with one stone, metaphorically. Right. And so what we're seeing here is that it is um, I mean, my source is consistent with what this article had been released on. And so I don't know if it's a coincidence that my source had told me about this just a few weeks ago and then they knew this article was going to come out. It's hard to say. Right. But ultimately, what we're seeing here is that the CIA also has close ties to a company called Med Immune. Now, I want to make. I, I say this carefully because this is not a COVID episode, but in the members only episode, we discuss how there are certain people that have been tested on by, with adrenochrome and we show the documents because I'm afraid if I show it publicly, I'm going to get removed. So what I'm going to do here is show you a selective um, clip or 
cropped picture of the document just because I want to ensure that uh, that this doesn't get taken down so as many people as possible could see this. And then um, <clears throat> and then we'll take a look here. So we see here MedImmune, according to Wikipedia, was a wholly owned subsidiary of AstraZeneca before February 14th, 2019. Now, keep in mind, AstraZeneca develops vaccines for COVID. Now, I'm not trying to make this a COVID disinformation or political episode, but we got to call it like we see it. I'm not going to tell you guys what to think. I'm just going to report the evidence. So let's take a look here. When it was announced that the MedImmune name and branding would be discontinued in favor of AstraZeneca. Long story short, MedImmune was a subsidiary of AstraZeneca, was then fully acquired by them in 2007, and what have you. Now, I would like to thank my friend Genius for pointing this out to me because I do not take the credit when I did not make the connection myself. So take a look, MedImmune, right? We know about the company. We see that right there. Now let's take a look at one of the adrenochrome documents, the 19th page over here and take a look at this now for those who watch the members only episodes you'll know a ton about these adrenochrome documents and i say that not to try to get you guys onto patreon but because i can't talk about it publicly i honestly can't so look at this right here page 19 med immune take a look at that that's a company that's helping to develop certain forms of adrenochrome i gotta be careful what i say and publicly i truly would love to show you guys the rest of this document because in the members only episodes, there's evidence to show that there are in fact prisoners and people who have quote unquote misbehaved, which are now being reprimanded and punished by going into these types of experimentations, which connects back to the Russian experiment about the footage we saw with the boat being stuck in the rock. Those type of people, those rogue agents that are sent in from the UFO spiral portals are put into experiments like that, S experiments that are anomalistically fused. And the reason for that is because again, progress. The government is always trying to excel with its spiritual and scientific uh, anomalistic technology, and that's um, <clears throat> and th and that's no different here because we see the U the CIA is using these companies to test on these rogue agents. Right. And what I also find interesting, too, is that a lot of the satellites that were coincidentally destroyed by this space hurricane were satellites that were focused on an uh, unusual amount and unexplainable amount of plasma, different kinds of plasma unexplained anomalistic clouds of plasma or bubbles of plasma if you want to call it right and you know what's also very interesting as well too the company metamune also had an abnormal amount of interest in plasma right and so i'm not trying to say you know because AstraZeneca bought them, they're putting something in the COVID vaccine. I want to make that a disclaimer. I want to make that very clear. That's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying here, though, is that you see how whether it's the elites or whether it's the corporations, they all keep it within the circle, all within their own little club, if you want to call it. Now, there may be different factions within this big club, kind of like organized crime. You have multiple people with the same overall agenda, but there are different subsets of agendas within that, different factions, right? And so when we look at all of this, we have no choice but to say to ourselves, what can come of this? What can occur? Now, I want to show you guys a video of an alleged extraterrestrial that was caught being taken down in a UFO spiral in correspondence with the space hurricane, right? So you see that? So we see that right there, right? All right, so I just paused it right now. So I want you guys to... Um, to let me know what you think. Uh, again, it is not the, the longest episode that we've ever done, but what we're seeing here is we're seeing a reoccurrence and consistency within a lot of these instances that seem to be anomalistically charged that may not be as anomalistic as we think. We see a form of drop feeding. We see within the dark operations that this is what occurs with people within the secret space program, specifically part of the CIA, that tend to generally be I guess we could say become defectors, if you want to call it, right? And so when we look at all of this, we have no choice but to say to ourselves, what is there that is coming next, right? What other things are being hidden? Right now, it seems to be the shaking from underground that we don't know what's happening, right? So again, we look at all of this and we look at the companies, we look at, you know, the alleged rumors, we look at the defectors, the agents, the non-compliance, we look at the agreements that are consistent with other eyewitness testimony and tons of documents of extraterrestrials having agreements with humans. And we see it does fit, which explains the sudden anomalistic, totally unexplainable spirals that are seen all over the place all of the time, right? So I want you guys to let me know what you think. And uh, we're going to um, we're gonna catch you guys 
I think uh, we'll catch you guys tomorrow. Cheers.